type to get out and see what had dropped out of the sky during the night. Steve Johnson still hunts for that shrapnel today. And you'd be surprised just where it's lurking. Now, I've been on the hoe as an angler all my life, and I never found one bit until about 18 months ago. And then I thought, oh, could I have missed all that? You've got to really look. You've got to get down on your hands and knees and look like a magnifying glass. But once you've spotted your first bit, the rest comes easy. All you need for success is a pair of scissors and the skills of a mountain goat. What we've got to try and do is find a crack or a crevice where the shrapnel is going to be hiding. Ah, there's something in here. It's right down the bottom of the crevice. It is not easy to do this. Got it. Got it. Ah, here we are. There. An extraction. Hmm, I think you probably need to be a boy to appreciate that one. But Steve's fascination with this bit of Plymouth's history has led to a lifetime of collecting and exploring, training his eye to spot the almost hidden evidence of this city's traumatic past. If you look around buildings, you can see bomb holes in them. If you go down to where the old Devonport Hospital was, you can see huge holes in the wall where bits of bombs have just smashed into the stone and splintered them out. We can see here where a, a section of shrapnel came in here at high speed, like so, and caused the stone to split into what I call a spider's web. Uh, you can see the individual splits in the stone coming out like so here. So the impact was absolutely huge. And if you walk along here, it's everywhere. During the war, Pearl Merritt and her family lived nearby. I was six years old when the Blitz came and took our home and I'm in trauma now.